Carbonyl compounds are subject to protonation and deprotonation by Bronsted acids and bases respectively. However, the acidity and basicity properties of the carbonyl group are rather unique. First, let's focus on the more straightforward idea, which is protonation of the carbonyl oxygen by a strong acid. And really here, the first point is strong acids are required to make this work. So our benchmark for how strong an acid has to be to protonate a functional group is the pKa of the conjugate acid of that functional group. So if we look at the pKa of the conjugate acid of a carbonyl compound, that involves protonating the most basic site, the carbonyl oxygen, to generate the protonated carbonyl structure you see on the left. For a ketone or aldehyde, a typical pKa value here is about negative seven. Qualitatively, this means that the protonated carbonyl group itself is a strong acid, in fact, a very strong acid on par with something like HCl. In order to generate this structure from a neutral carbonyl group, an acid of comparable or even greater strength is required. And just to make this a little more concrete, recall that the pKa, this negative seven, is really a benchmark for the strength of the protonated carbonyl group as an acid. So R2COH plus, the protonated carbonyl group, is a stronger acid than, let's be honest, pretty much anything. Anything with a pKa of the acid HA that's greater than negative seven. This includes a number even of strong acids. For example, R2COH plus is a much stronger acid than hydronium ion, which has a pKa of zero. And by extension then, it's stronger than pretty much any neutral acid. This includes carboxylic acids, alcohols, thiols, amines, HNR2, and really, just to abbreviate this, we can put in a box pretty much everything. Essentially, the only things that can protonate a neutral carbonyl group are very strong acids. And this is really focusing on ketones and aldehydes at the moment. The protonated carbonyl group is a weaker acid than pretty much nothing then, by extension. And in this category of pretty much nothing, we have acids whose pKa's are less than or more negative than negative seven. And this, again, is, is almost nothing. Only the strongest of strong acids are stronger than the protonated carbonyl. And about the only two or three I would put here are HI, hydroiodic acid, H2SO4, sulfuric acid, and even then, only the first proton of H2SO4. In fact, HSO4 minus goes up here in the weaker than the protonated carbonyl as an acid category, and maybe HCl. HCl is about on par with the protonated carbonyl in terms of acid strength, which just goes to show you what a strong acid this really is. So if we want to protonate a neutral carbonyl group, we want to run this reaction backwards, we need to use one of these strong acids. Despite the strong acidity of the protonated carbonyl, this elementary step of protonation of the carbonyl compound can be important in the context of reactions of the carbonyl group under acidic conditions when a strong acid is around. And the reason it's an important elementary step is that protonation increases the strength of the carbonyl group as an electrophile, specifically at the atom within the carbonyl group that was already electrophilic, the carbonyl carbon. And what we mean by this, we can put in concrete terms by looking at what protonation does to the structure of the carbonyl group. If we look at the protonated carbonyl group and we now think about doing the same kind of resonance electron flow that we did for the neutral carbonyl group, pushing electrons to oxygen, we generate a resonance structure in which we have the familiar positive charge on the carbonyl carbon. But in contrast to the case of the neutral carbonyl group, we now have a carbonyl oxygen that in fact looks like a neutral hydroxyl group in this alternative resonance form. There's no more charge separation. There's just a sharing of the positive charge between oxygen and carbon. And in fact, the positive charge is living predominantly on the less electronegative atom, on the carbon. This means that in a protonated carbonyl structure, protonated ketone or aldehyde, the carbonyl carbon is an awesome electrophile. If we're gonna call the neutral carbonyl carbon a great electrophile, the best word I can come up with for the protonated carbonyl's carbon is an awesome electrophile. And so protonation 
of the carbonyl oxygen is a prelude to, for example, associations of a nucleophile to the cationic carbon that we see in this right-hand resonance structure. Nucleophiles can associate to this carbonyl carbon leading to addition reactions and other related processes. So we've talked about basicity of the carbonyl oxygen, but what about acidity of the carbonyl group? Well, acidity is a little bit more complicated to consider. There are no, of course, acidic hydrogens associated with the carbonyl group per se. But the carbonyl group is electron withdrawing, and like all electron withdrawing groups, it has an effect on the acidity of hydrogens that are linked to atoms connected to the carbonyl group. In other words, if we name the carbons connected to the carbonyl group using Greek letters, alpha, beta, gamma, etc., what the carbonyl group does is it acidifies hydrogens linked to what's called the alpha carbon, that carbon connected to the carbonyl group. And all electron withdrawing groups do this for reasons that we'll see in a second. In a ketone or aldehyde or many carboxylic acid derivatives that lack hydrogens connected to the heteroatomic group, the most acidic hydrogens are linked to the alpha carbon. And so through electron flow like this, really just a proton transfer step occurring at the alpha carbon, we generate an anionic structure that you see on the right, as well as H3O+. And we can ask about the pKa of the hydrogen linked to the alpha carbon. And for a ketone, it's around 20. This is going to differ somewhat for carboxylic acid derivatives due to electronic effects of the heteroatomic group. But a good benchmark for a ketone is around 20. The conjugate base of a carbonyl compound generated via deprotonation of the alpha position is called an enolate. And the reason we call it that, again, will become clear in a second when we look at resonance structures. What we can ask now about the basicity of the enolate relative to other commonly basic groups that we encounter. And as we've done before, we're going to use the pKa of the conjugate acid as a benchmark for this. And so pKa of Hb for bases that are weaker than the enolate will be less than our benchmark value of 20, while bases that are stronger than the enolate will have conjugate acids Hb with pKa's that are greater than 20. And this is an interesting benchmark number because it kind of falls in the middle. For example, the enolate is a stronger base than an alkoxide. Recall that the typical pKa of an alcohol is about 15, so the enolate is a stronger base than an alkoxide. However, the enolate is a weaker base than an amide, NR2- anionic nitrogen. The pKa of an amine is up closer to 35. The enolate is also a weaker base than hydride, H-. The pKa of H2 is comparable to that of an amine, about 35. Back in the stronger category, we find here the enolate is a stronger base than a carboxylate. And now is a good time to point out that a carboxylate is kind of the oxygen analog, really, of an enolate. Notice that in the enolate, we have negative charge on a carbon that is alpha to a carbonyl group. In other words, a carbon that is attached directly to the carbonyl carbon. The oxygen that's anionic in a carboxylate is kind of an alpha oxygen with respect to the carbonyl carbon here. And so, rather unsurprisingly then, right, the replacement of O- minus for C- minus generates a stronger base. The enolate is a stronger base than a carboxylate. We've seen this a number of times by now, but just to drive the point home, the enolate is also a stronger base than the conjugate base of any strong acid, something like Cl-, HSO4-, SO42-, iodide, I-, and bromide, Br-. The enolate is a much stronger base than these conjugate bases of strong acids. And moving down again to the weaker category, of course, any unstabilized carbon base, like an alkyl anion, CR3-, that lacks important resonance forms, is going to be a stronger base than the enolate. And even some stabilized carbon anions that involve resonance with other carbons, like, for example, the allylic anion, CH2-, attached to a double bond, is still even a stronger base than the enolate. So all of these anions at the bottom can, in theory anyway, be used to deprotonate the alpha position of a carbonyl group favorably. The bases you see up here cannot be used in general 
to deprotonate the alpha position to generate an enolate. Now, two things are kind of left open at this point. One is, why is this elementary step important and in what context is it important? And the second question, which is more fundamental in a way, is why do we call it an enolate? Where does this name come from? Well, the name enolate comes from alternative resonance form of the conjugate base of a carbonyl compound. We generate this by using the pair of electrons on the alpha carbon as an electron source and the carbonyl CO pi bond, specifically the pi antibond, as an electron sink. That generates the structure that you see on the right. And now we can see why we call this structure an enolate. It includes a carbon-carbon double bond. That's where the ene part of the name comes from. And the allate part of the name comes from the alkoxide type oxygen, the O minus group here. So this O minus adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond is referred to as an ene allate. And if we look at the locations of negative charge in these two important resonance forms of the enolate, we see something interesting. What deprotonation has done is increase the nucleophilicity of both the alpha carbon, which is negative in this left-hand resonance structure, and the carbonyl oxygen, which is negative in this structure on the right. Primarily, we'll focus our attention on reactions of the alpha carbon, reactions with electrophiles that bond selectively to the alpha carbon. However, it can be useful to keep in mind that the oxygen of an enolate is nucleophilic as well and certain types of electrophile will bond preferentially to oxygen rather than carbon. For the time being, I just want us to get used to this idea that the alpha carbon of a carbonyl group can be deprotonated in the presence of a strong base like Nr2 minus H minus or an alkyl carbanion. That deprotonation is an entry into nucleophilic reactivity of the alpha carbon or sometimes the oxygen under basic conditions, and we'll see this in a number of reactions moving forward.